Some of you asked me how I did the Bluetooth and the wireless charge mods and if I could make a tutorial, but since I already have them built in, I never really had a way to make a tutorial, but I bought a secondary sh well housing for my 3DS and I got the middle plate along with the rest and since my old one has a big hard mod slot like this one here which has scratches and is far too big for my USB port but that's because I didn't use a USB port in the beginning I got this one to make a new one and that means I can build in anything I had to build in and film how I did it so I won't assemble things on camera because most of the stuff is assembled but I will explain what I do and what I have done and I have a couple of pictures of how stuff looks when it's assembled and what you have to do so I can kind of construct a tutorial out of this but we'll just see how it goes this is the Bluetooth transmitter that you will need you can switch it between receiver and transmitter but we'll be using it only as a transmitter to send the audio from inside the 3DS to whatever Bluetooth device that you want. Um, when, once you have it, you just have to open it. It's, it doesn't have any screws, you just pop it open and you will get this assembled with this and you have to strip all of this off. You have to do it just like the iPhone, strip the headphone jack, the switch and the USB port and another switch and I cut off the USB port with pliers and what you have to do then is put it permanently into transmit mode and you do that by shorting these two out and if I can focus on that what I did is just solder in some metal there as you can see and that will put it into the transmitter mode. The most hard thing to do is get the button working on another place. So what I did was I sold it. That's, you have to see that on the picture on the forum. There is um, a contact here and also here and you have to solder that and then hot glue it because otherwise it will get loose. Um, this is to replace the button and put it somewhere else so you can press the button from on top of the 3DS and that's a really really hard thing to solder. Um, once it's stripped down you have three contacts here these are for the headphone jack and two here which is for the power and I will show a picture right now how it looks when once those are soldered in and what I will do is um, make a connector here and another connector on the switch that I'll be using so I can plug it on and off from for disassembling purposes. For the button of the Bluetooth mod I bought this of eBay. I bought a bunch of them. I got hundreds of them. Um, I made this because if it's in here like this and you have the Bluetooth chip here, every time you disassemble the 3DS or something, this plate needs to stay connected to the 3DS because this is glued in. So I made this I don't know what to call it, but I can plug it in and out so I can take this off and on like I want. So that's just a convenience thing. And what I have to do is to make this fit here is like in my old one, I have a hole there. Uh, let me focus on that. That I made with a Dremel like this one and it goes right in there and it's the perfect fit so I will have to do that on this one and then I will glue in the button now I've dremeled in a hole and I will glue this in 
and as you can see it fits perfectly so it doesn't stick out it's just flush and I can press it and that will be good now I've got to glue it in the button is installed I glued it in with uh, hot glue and now I can press it the good thing is it doesn't stick out so it really looks like it belongs here and that makes it give, gives it this flush look and I like that so next step will be to place the receiver coil to make the wireless charge receiver fit properly you have to sand this one down and this one I will show you on my older you can see it better there so it's grinded down this this one and there I use my Dremel for that and it doesn't need to look pretty as long as the receiver coil can go here alongside with the rest so this is how it should look with the button installed once you get a receiver from eBay for wireless charging this is an iPhone one, this is not the one I used. I used the one for the Samsung S5, but I have this one laying around, so I show you what it looks assembled. You can see the coil here and some kind of motherboard there. Once you disassemble that, you can strip the wires and stuff and you will keep this over. And what I did was I put it a little over each other and sold the two wires to it. And that's pretty much all. All you need to do is make it as compact as possible Put two wires on it and make them go to your charger. So you can see I have one wire there and one wire there. And that's all you, all you have to do. Once you have that, you need to fit it inside your housing. That would be here and your golden. All you need to do is put it up like this and I will show you that in a moment. But first I got to install it. Put some tape over it. Um, I have some shielding tape which came with it and over it I put some magnetic tape and that's pretty much all this is how it looks inside the housing and now we put some tape over it and we'll add on to the next step now the tape is over it covering it all up making sure nothing can short out this is for the Bluetooth mods the wires go up put some electric tape there but it doesn't really matter as long as it stays and now we head for the next step. The Bluetooth thing is there. The receiver coil and wireless charge setup is there. The connector is connected. It works, I tested it. I can press the button, the blue light will light up, the red light will light up. What you can do, what I did in my old mod, um, is I made a hole here and put some hot glue over it. And that lets the light through. And I did the same thing with the bottom you can see there's some hot glue there and that made it so I can see the Bluetooth uh, light for binding and other stuff and I will have to do that with this one too but this is pretty much how it looks in the end these three wires you can see there are for the Bluetooth mod there's ground for the hard mod that is there and we have it going to this one which is I'm not quite sure anymore what it's called. Two are on the other side of the board. These two are for the wireless charger. And here come the... This is the power wires for the Bluetooth. Those go here. That takes the power. And these are the ones that go for the audio. But that's pretty much all. So I used the Dremel to make a hole there. It's um, quite a hassle to find the position. But what I found is where this gap is you take the right line I try to point it out this one and you follow it and make that the middle of your hole and you take this one from the SD card and put it a little offset of the middle to the right and that is pretty much the good position and now I put some tape behind it on the other side I will hot glue it, cut the hot glue from this side and I will have a really flush hot glue that's transparent so the light can shine through. This is how it should look now. You have a LED that's here that lights up blue 
the control for that is here. If I keep holding it, it will shut off, making a red light. Holding it, it takes a while. You gotta press it seven seconds normally. If it was on, it powers on faster, but when it was off for a while, it will take a while to power on. As you can see, you have a blue LED here for the Bluetooth. This is looking. This is power off. And if you hold it till it goes on, and keep holding it then, it will go into binding mode, which are rapid flashes, like, oh. <laughs> well, that's how it looks. And on the upside, it looks like this. You have the button there. And my heart mod looks much better because now it finally is just as wide as the USB port. So I'm really good, glad about that. So it's looking good. So now I need to make a hole in the back plate. But I'm not sure if I'm going to do that now. I might do that later, but I already have this one. So this I can do whenever I want. I don't need to disassemble the 3DS anymore. So that's pretty much done. So all I need to do now is replace my cover. And then I'm done. And here we have the finished product. A shell swapped Nintendo 3DS. It used to be this, and now it's this. We have the wireless charge mod inside, plus the Bluetooth mod, plus a couple other things, but like I have the C-Stick mod from the PSP. I also have this, which is an analog stick with Majora's Mask on it, but I have some issues with that. It's quite wobbly, so I haven't installed it yet. But um, everything works, I just tested it. Everything run, runs fine. It's golden on top now. It's golden on the bottom. I haven't made the hole yet for the Bluetooth light, which is here. But that works too. It's on the, under the lid. This one is really nice. I don't need screws in it because it holds really tight. But if I put the old bottom plate on and I fire up the Bluetooth, you will see the blue light. For now, I just leave this one without, because I don't bind usually. I have one, this transmit receiver, it's dedicated with this antenna. I made that myself, but it's dedicated to the 3DS, so I don't need to bind. So I just press enable and it will work, but it doesn't matter right now. If I have issues, I will do that. So we have the bottom plate. The heart mod is looking much better now. Button is here. Everything is working. And the last thing, of course, is testing the wireless charger. So what I have is, I have this box, which is my 3DS box. Everything I can do with my 3DS is pretty much inside here. So we have power safe device just because, a secondary power board, my uh, heart mod, Franken SD, some screwdriver. This is from my iPhone 7. This is for, never mind. Um, an extender, my anchor for reading out, plus there's an SD inside with my recording software, so streaming software, everything is on there. C cables, just basic stuff, some SD cards. And on top, I have a wireless charger, which I put on the top here. It's not the best looking, but it works. So this is my box I can take with me when I go somewhere. And if I plug it in, hang on. So I just plug this one in quick. It will light up. And if I put my 3DS on top, it charges. And the, this, the, the range is great because I can lift up my 3DS like a centimeter and it's still charging. Well, it's, it's really hovering now. And I can move it around and it has 
quite a lot of margin where I can charge it. And side to side, it doesn't really matter. It even then charges because I put some height here to make the 3DS fall into place. And it always charged. Green light because I like it. And there we have it. A quick update on the analog stick. Um, let me turn on the brightness. I actually got it in fitting by making spaces out of paper and putting them in under the analog and now it doesn't wobble. It does wobble but that's just as much as the original does, just as it spin. But it looks great because it fits with the C-Stick now. So, and it has so much more grip. It's getting used to the feel, it feels like rock, but it's still really cool and it fits the colors now much better than what I used to have. I got this from Shapeways, like I said before. So if you think you can manage to build it in, you can order one there. It fits really good with the Majora's Mask 3DS, so that's looking nice. Anyway, that was my two-in-one guide. Thanks for watching. Bye.